So my name's Lee Rosa. I um, uh, have been in the business 19 years. Um, I got in in 2005 and uh, uh, formed a business partnership with uh, my still business partner. Uh, we, we have a real estate business called RGT Home Experts. And um, uh, we sold around 2,000 homes in our career. And uh, in 2016, I stepped out of the role of day-to-day -day sales to uh, run a franchise where I have 170 agents. I still have my real estate team of five, and I have a healthy roster at Glover U. And so as we were kind of preface at the beginning of this, bouncing around, that's why slowing down, I, I stayed on that for a little bit. Because if, if, with all of those balls juggling, if I don't slow down, I'm missing a lot. I'm missing the things that matter, and I'm only handling what's loud. And for those of us that run brokerages or run businesses with a lot of people, the loud doesn't necessarily mean we move fast. It means we're just dealing with the bombs or the landmines that pop up. But if we slow down and think, well, now we can proactively work and move. Okay? So uh, if, if you see value in today, please follow me on Instagram, on YouTube. Uh, I put my socials up here. Like, subscribe. Uh, I think that's all the fun stuff you're supposed to say. Um, I'm still learning all the, all the lingo and all that. And yet, please like, subscribe, and uh, follow. Um, I, uh, uh, what you'll see on, on, on Instagram and YouTube is uh, I've, I've really invested a lot into uh, the messaging that I'm putting out there. Um, because when I got into the business, I, I was a student of the game. I, I put hours and hours and hours into learning the fundamentals of this business. Um, and then bided my time until I had the opportunity to just pour into people. Uh, one of the, 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 the kind of the, the laurels or the things that I'm, I'm lead, I lean my elbow on, uh, the Miami Board of Realtors has a 20 under 40 uh, award where uh, they, they name 20 people under 40 uh, that, that are crushing their business. And I've coached uh, five on the last four years. Uh, so four years in a row, five agents each year. Uh, this year there was two which is pretty awesome. And um, the last panel, I had uh, uh, one of the agents up on the panel who went from 50 to 100 this year. And so, uh, but today is gonna be about growth. It's gonna be uh, not about agent production, but about how can we grow through the Glover U way. All right, so with that said, uh, what do we, uh, what audience do we have? So let's, uh, let's kind of break that down. Do we have agents that are running teams? Perfect. Uh, brokers, uh, independent brokers. Brokerage owners, right? Okay, perfect, awesome. And um, networks or uh, uh, cloud-based uh, brokerages. Awesome, awesome. All the tactics we're gonna break down today is for all, everybody. Okay, so today is going to be broken into three segments. Segment one is gonna be the mindset of the agent. The second is gonna to be tools that we're able to leverage. And then three is gonna be tactics. All right, so those are gonna be the three segments. Three segments. And then I got, um, I'm gonna show you guys uh, uh, something called the four quadrants. That's gonna be a part of this. Uh, and then I'm gonna point out, once I show you guys, many of you may have seen it before, but I'm gonna show you guys how it was used yesterday. So if you felt some type of way in yesterday's keynote, it's because he understands the four quadrants and I'll show you what he did. And once you know it, you'll see it all the time when it's, when it's being used, which is really, really cool. It's neuro-linguistic programming, all right? So, all right. So the first step or part of today is gonna to be the mindset of the agent. And so all, all books that teach models gotta start with mindset. 90% of success is mindset, and yet if we don't understand the mindset of who we're recruiting or who we're looking to influence, then we're just spinning our wheels. So the first, there's 10 points that I'm gonna share under mindset. The first is that agents fear change. So if you know agents fear change, know that that's why they put up the wall immediately. They're afraid of change, changing brokerages, changing tactics, change in general. And so if, if many of us, when we hit a level of production, 
We're recruited, we're called, we're, we're, we're invited to do things. And so a lot of these are gonna speak to you. A lot of these are gonna speak to how you feel or why you react a certain way when somebody is attempting to recruit you. So kind of turn that around as to why agents may respond to you a certain way. So since agents fear change, it causes them to be complacent. And the agent has to change to make a change. In other words, there has to be a change in how they think for them to be open to moving brokerages or joining a team or going from a single agent to a team or going from a team to a single agent. Number two, agents don't wanna move. They just don't want to move. I love my broker even though I'm $100,000 in debt and they haven't called me in, right? They don't want to move. And when you make calls to a recruit, they didn't wake up that morning and go, I can't wait for someone to call me. So that's why there's a part of that energy behind they fear change and they don't want to move. So number three, agents are content with the, ha with the company that they're with. So they're not necessarily thrilled, but they also aren't beaten down the door to change companies. So we have to understand, again, when we say, hey, come check out my company, see what we have to offer, they get defensive because they don't want to move. They fear change, they're complacent, and they're content. Number four, agents are programmed, their mindset, they're programmed to use the reflective no pattern, reflective no. The reflective no is, can I help you? No, I'm just looking at the department store. Even though you're there to buy something, you still say, no, I'm just looking. You went to the mall, walked through the mall to go to that store, can I help you? Oh, no, 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 I'm just looking. Meanwhile, you know they can help you faster than you could find what you want. You went there for the particular item, but our reflex no. And so they're conditioned to use a reflex no. And it doesn't necessarily mean that they're rejecting your advances. It just is a natural reaction to real estate agent, as a real estate agent. Number five, their hot buttons are time and money. They wanna make the most amount of money in the least amount of time. And the agents who have the money want more time. And usually, the agents who have all the time don't make the money. And so those are two hot buttons to at least get past the reflex no. Because leverage isn't a dirty word. It's not necessarily taught industry-wide. And so what a great opportunity if you know that they're a, I mean, that's, that's what Glover Agency does, is they, let's take everything off of the plate so that you could stay in your lane, which is why they recruit massive producers to the organization, because they give the leverage so the agent can stay in their lane. Yet, understanding that in your conversations, what a great opportunity, so when you get to the next phase, understand that's what they're looking to do. More money, more time, sometimes both, but it's usually one or the other, and then we get into the other. Number six, agents fear working harder. That was one that took me a long time to figure out. Agents fear working harder. I always thought everyone would want to make as much money as they possibly could. But that has a cause reaction. That means I got to work harder. It means I'm farther away from my, my family. Not necessarily, but that's their mindset. So again, the goal right now is to have you understand the mindset of the real estate agent. When you ask, or when you're going down this path and you realize that, oh wow, they, they, their fear is that they don't wanna work harder, it very well could be a defense mechanism. And so they equate making more money means I have to work harder because their real estate life experience has been what their experience has been, not necessarily what more powerful models or tools could do to help them get to a next level. So again, understand the whole goal, and I'm gonna go through kind of the next steps here in a second, but agents fear working harder. Number seven, agents are self-interested. 
In other words, interested in themselves. So when you look at this, think of a, 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 a baseball game or a baseball field when we look at recruiting. So think of first base as consultation, a phone conversation, which moves into second base, which is a needs analysis. Is it time? Is it growth? Is it more income? Is it financial freedom? Is it more time with the family? So first base is teasing the, 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 the sit down, and second base is having the sit down. Third base is the value proposition, is where you now know their gaps, you know their holes, and then you then plug them with your business's value proposition, your brokerage, your um, team, your network. And home base, the score, is handling objections and onboarding, which is just as important as one first base, second base, and third base. Onboarding is so vital. It's, your, it's, it's, it's where you put your money where your mouth is, where, hey, this is what life will look like, and just imagine that not being a tight-knit system in your business, and that's their first impression. Number eight, you have less than 10 seconds on a phone conversation to create curiosity. At Lead Up, Kathy shared what we should say so I'm gonna tell you what you shouldn't say in the first 10 seconds. What you should not say is, did I catch you at a good time? <laughs> Kathy at Lead Up said, what did I catch you in the middle of? Assuming that they're busy and they're gonna say something obnoxious because they don't wanna talk in the initial call and now you can make a joke about it. Breaking the ice, everyone kind of giggles and you at least have them off center because everyone says, how are you? What's going on? Did I catch you at a good time? Verse, hey, so what did I catch you in the middle of? Writing an offer. Congratulations. Congratulations. What offer number is that for the week? What? One? Interesting. Today's your lucky day. If you wrote five this week, you see where I'm going now? Now I'm having a completely different conversation than everyone else. If you wrote five this week, how would you feel? Who are you? <laughs> right? But you have less than 10 seconds to build curiosity with an established or an experienced agent. Number nine, curiosity is created by using third party references or testimonials. Would you like results like David Baez, who went from 3 million to 6 million to 9 million to 18 over three years? If you could double your business year over year for the next three years, what would your business look like? Using testimonials. Now, at the beginning of my recruiting career, I had none, so I borrowed them. So I borrowed them until I had my own. Until I had my own. So you could borrow from an office down the street or someone else inside your, bro inside your, your franchise or your brokerage, um, or do what you have to do to use testimonials. Make that a focus so that you could start using them. They do the heaviest lifting. Wins that you can share inside your incubation is absolutely the heaviest lifting you can do. We do it with sellers, with buyers. Let's do it with recruits as well. Number 10, most agents have a short-term vision and a single focus. They're looking for the now fix, the magic bullet. They're not thinking of plans or a business for that matter. They're not thinking of business plans, they're not thinking of plans, they're not thinking of running a business. So if we help them visualize a growth plan through a business strategy meeting, we can talk about these things. We can have these conversations. So those are the mindset of recruiting, of having conversations with real estate agents so that we have the opportunity to know why they're saying what they're saying. It's kind of the cheat code so you know why they react or say what they say. Now I'm gonna move us into the second phase, which is tools. 
when it comes to growth or, or recruiting, let's, let's, say, let's just use the word recruiting. It's not a dirty word. Because if we're truly helping people, if we have a track record of helping people, and we know that agents already have a reflex of no, even though they're in debt, even though they're not growing, even though, let's use the word recruiting for the rest of this presentation. So if we are focusing on recruiting, let's treat it like listings like a mega listing agent. And a mega listing agent uses a CRM. So when it comes to recruiting, we're going to be using a CRM. It could be the same CRM you use for your business, use tags, use sources that would be different, but treat growth like listings. You have appointments and you have gross. They come into your office, or I'm saying they join your, your, your company. That would be a listing taken. Does this make sense? Yes or yes? Awesome. So if we are running a business like listings, we have to track our what? Numbers. numbers, yes. So we have to track our numbers. We track our numbers inside a spreadsheet, CRM, some, some way that we can see where we are. One of my coaches, one of my first coaches uh, back in the day said, what you track, you can improve, and what you track and report, you can exponentially improve. So first step, track. That would be how many days did you work? How many calls did you make? How many appointments did you schedule? How many showed up? Because that's gonna be one of the coolest kind of grow things if we dive into recruiting is how many appointments did we schedule and how many didn't show or how many did show? And if we don't track, we can get very emotional. Oh my God, nobody shows up. Oh my God. <laughs> nobody, well how many did you set? I don't know, nobody. So track our numbers. Number three, have accountability partners. Have accountability partners. So if we have accountability partners, we wanna have role play partners. So we can get more efficient in what we say. And last, under tools, create a pipeline report. And I'll share with you my pipeline report. <coughs> right? It, it doesn't matter the order if you want to go top down or bottom up, right? 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. And I'm going to tell you what each one stands for. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. So you could go 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, or you could, it doesn't matter. 10 means they are joining our company in the next 30 days. We've met with them. They have said, we're joining. Maybe they have to close out a listing. Maybe they have to wait for something to close, but they have said, we're joining, it's just a formality. There are 10. A nine, they're joining next month. So in the next 60 days, 31 to 60 days. Eight, they're joining 61 to 90 days from now. And again, because of formalities. Hey, we have, if I, if my brokerage won't let me take my listings. Okay, so what's your plan? Well let me get this thing under contract or whatever the answer is, which I never understood the whole golden handcuffs thing. Amazing, where brokerages tie an agent down because it's so painful for them to leave. Never understood it, but hey, to each their own. Number seven, we met with them and we had a really, really good meeting. They didn't say they're ready to join, but it was they're, they're, like good vibes. Number six, we had an okay meeting. Definitely not a seven, but it was, it was, it was okay. And number five, I wrote, bye, Felicia. <laughs> yeah. Nope. Done. Not a culture fit, bad energy. Those of you that have met with agents, you, you, you guys connected what bye, Felicia means. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So anyone in here at Lead Up? in general, so, so right now, perfect. So just a couple of you guys. So, so I'm gonna pivot now to tactics. And after tactics, I, um, I am going to, depending on how much time and, and, and if you guys wanna get out of here, I was gonna dive into uh, the consultation. So at Lead Up, Kathy and Taylor had this really awesome battle, if you will. And they talked about new school tactics versus old school tactics. 
And so I'm gonna share a little bit of those notes with some of what I personally have used. And so you're gonna get the three of our input. So let's start with new school. And this was Taylor up on stage sharing what Glover U is using, uh, what Glover Agency is using uh, to grow and recruit. So the first is value prop videos. Value proposition videos. So the first step of value prop videos is have a wall of value. What is your wall of value? And when you think wall of value, think of little bricks and each brick is a value proposition, which would then fill a wall. And if you don't know what your value proposition is or what is important, ask your agents. Why did you join? Why do you stay? And check it off. Okay, so I got 10, 12, and I got check marks, like you could then tally it, one, two, three, four, five, if, if agents are continuing to say the same things. But that's how you get your wall of value. Like, it doesn't need to be you figuring it out. Just ask your agents, why do you stay? Why'd you join? Why'd you stay? So what Taylor said is take your five to seven biggest value propositions that solve an agent's problem, that solve the agent's problem, and create a video and promote it. So I'll give you... Uh, an example on my real estate team. One of the reason that agents have been on my real estate team seven years, six years, two years, our director of operations has been with us 13 years, is for our agents, once they schedule a listing appointment, they fill out a prequal, which they're trained on to ask, same thing that we hand out at Glover U and they turn it into operations, and the operations does the CMA for them. Agent schedule showings, or agent schedule, do a consultation, agent, uh, the, the buyer wants to see six properties, they turn in the MLS numbers, and our operations team schedules the showings, shows them the best map, and all they do is get the print out and go. Like, agent wants to leave the team, they can leave the team, but now they got all these hours of work that do they want to do it? Do they not? That's a value proposition. So in, in growing RGT Home Experts, this would be a video that we would put out. Yeah. How much time do you spend scheduling showing instructions? If you're like me, that sucks, <laughs> right? Join us and we'll do it for you. How many more deals can you close if you didn't have to spend time scheduling showings? Real estate would be so easy if it wasn't for other agents, right? Yeah. All right. Number two, under new school recruiting, Facebook and Instagram lead advertisements. So we take the value prop videos and we pump ads on Instagram and Facebook. Number three, masterminds. Hold monthly to quarterly masterminds where you open it up brand agnostic. So you're inviting agents from other companies along with your top producers, brand agnostic, and make it a party. So you get agents from outside your company, agents with your company, put it at a sexy spot, happy hour, and sponsored. And sponsored by your vendors. Number four, email blasts. Take your value proposition, break it up into individual emails. So if you have 10 bricks of your value proposition, 10 different emails. And think of emails as creating emotional proximity. Since agents fear change and agents inevitably move companies, we're just trying to be top of mind with value, adding value, which leads me to number five, items of value. One of the reasons that Glover U is the fastest growing training organization and coaching organization is because we give everything for free. Like just go to GloverU.com, go and download everything. Just give items of value, give, 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 give. And at some point, there will be a divorce. There will be something that happens inevitably when agents sell successfully real estate. So just provide, give, give, give items of value. And number six, invite to your sales or team meetings. Let them see and feel your culture. If you guys follow me on social media, you'll hear me say this a lot. Culture is a verb. 
Everyone can say, it's like it's this fancy word. You feel culture. You all felt that here. There's an energy at Glover U. That's culture, it's a verb, it's an action, it's an activity. So invite them to your meetings. Let them see and feel what you do. Not tell them what you do, let them see and feel. Your recognition of your agents and how they're crushing it and what they're doing and then introducing the people joining your brokerage or your team. Let them feel your culture and that does a lot of heavy lifting. So now let's move to old school recruiting. Number one, everyone's favorite. Pick up the phone. <laughs> Pick up the phone and call. So how do we do that? I wrote down four things. Number one, have a call schedule. Again, we're listing agents. Have a schedule. Number two, understand that the majority of agents aren't going to say yes, so follow up. Follow up, follow up. Have systems for your follow up. Number three, learn this at lead up. It's best to catch agents later in the day, 3.30 to 5.30. And of course, Kathy said, the best follow-up schedule is 5 to 5.30. In other words, that's when you're following up after you've had meetings and, and connections with agents. Next, under pick up, I'm sorry. So, so what I did here is under pick up the phone and call, those were the, the, the first kind of pieces of that. Now under, still under pick up the phone and call, I want you to have the title, select your target audience that you will pick up the phone and call. So I, I, I labeled here, think of this as your tags, think of this as your targeted groups, and I'm gonna give you for your CRM. Okay, experienced, pre-licensed, new license, one to seven closings, that's the next level, one to seven closings, eight plus closings, so I'm gonna pause right there for a second. So agents with one to seven, the reason I break it up this way is agents that close six deals in a year. Now again, luxury kind of skews this so you could use your best judgment in your market. But, but in, even if an agent closes three transactions and nine million in volume, there's a reason they only close three transactions because they don't have systems. So the conversation or the direction with them is systems. I can help you with systems that can help you sell more real estate in less time. Eight plus closings, where of course we're also talking systems, but we're also talking about possible moving into the next level, which would be leverage. Yeah, scalability, absolutely. Then you have Rainmaker, and Rainmaker would be they have a team. Next, independent brokers, plugging in and having a, a, a friend in this business right now as the NAR settlement is taking hold. I mean, if, if we're just looking at pouring into others, independent brokers is absolutely um, uh, important to have a mothership of some sort, whether it's a friend, just to shake hands, have lunch, mastermind. And then the last of this target audience would be agents who left your team or company. We want to tag that, follow up with them, see how they're doing, where are they at, what's going on, which is huge if you know what your value proposition is and they just wanted to go to greener pastures. One of my uh, lines that I live by is, the grass is greener where you water it. I've had many agents go to another company and realize that it's not necessarily greener on the other side and come right back. And again, we're gonna use broker metrics so we could see where they are, who they are, what their business is, and is their business up or down? Changes the conversation. Make these calls about potential, growth, next level, ideas, strategies, no strings attached. Like, I'm not gonna hurt you. I always say, my name is Lee and I'm your friend. So number two, under old school, is call the co-ops, the other side of the transaction. Call them during the transaction, say thank you, offer help, or I'm here. Call after the inspection, and tease a gift. Tease a gift, maybe a book, an opportunity. But hey, after the closing, I'd like for you to know I got something for you. And then after the closing, offer the gift, which would then mean that they would meet with you. 
check in, make sure the transaction's going well, and of course, invite to educational events. If you have a value proposition book, that would be a great time to send it after closing, but that's not the book I was referring to, an item of value, something that speaks to your model, something that speaks to your business, um, and let that be your talking point. All right, number three, under old school is a visit <clears throat> agents at open houses and brokers opens. Meet the agents at their open houses and brokers opens. As Kathy says, do you think their broker stops by, their broker opens? Just stop by, say hi. Hey, I was in the neighborhood. Number four, leverage the hire. Leverage the hire. When they join your company, just like when you take a listing, so they're hot, they're ready. Take the roster of their company and go down it with them. Hey, what do you think? Broker metrics. Here's a pro tip. Should they have a referral, ask the agent who just joined your company to do a three-way text. Do a three-way text introducing the conversation. Number five, monthly educational events and a training calendar. In other words, you're using the training calendar as your muscle. On the training calendar, have three levels of training. Training for a newer agent, training for an agent who knows enough to be dangerous, and have training for rainmakers, which would be leverage, which would be um, uh, leading others, leadership conversations. Number six, mergers and acquisitions. And what a great way to have a conversation and talk about NAR settlement. I mean, Glover, you provides the dialogues. Let that be a mastermind that you talk about. Hey, let's, let's set up lunch. Let's talk about like what you're telling your agents is going on. One of my sister offices um, created a video of the new buyer broker agreement that just came out in Florida, sent it to an agent that left the company, and she said, I haven't even heard anything from my broker. I'm coming back. So if that's happening in South Florida, it's happening around where you're at. And so what a great opportunity to start at the top, go to the independent, go to uh, these larger companies. Number seven, vendor referrals, mortgage title, inspectors. I mean, what a great conversation. You go to the inspector and say, hey, who was crushing it two years ago that you haven't heard of it from in a while? Think about that. Same with title. Same with LOs, mortgage, mortgage professionals. So if we take these two, old school and new school, there's, there's a couple things that really just stand out that merge the two, and that's consistency. Whatever you choose inside old school or new school, build it through consistency. Because we're people helping people, and that's what recruiting is. We truly are pouring into people and inevitably over time, think of it as dating. And as long as we're providing an amazing experience, helping them grow their business, at the end of the day, just waiting for the opportunity to take that next conversation. And be passionate about your mission, your vision, your values. Lead with who you are and what will attract people to you. And have patience. Recruiting is a long game. That was a mistake I made when I first got in and thinking I could come in and just hit home runs. Gotta hit the single, that's what the first base, second base, third base. Just understand that, that it's, it's, it's a process. Present positive, negative present, negative future, positive future. And it goes in that order. So, so, so let me kind of go over a couple things on this. So ET yesterday was like, how y'all doing? We're all doing awesome. Where in your life are, are, you know, are you struggling? Well, shit, I thought it was awesome. All of a sudden, I'm thinking of where I'm struggling. You have so much potential, but if nothing changes, nothing changes. Negative future. Then he said some magic words, and you were like, I can change, I can think, I, I got a positive future. And he would go, boom, he'd ask a question, you're right back in negative present. 
Oh my God, he just said something. Ah, oh God. But, and then you go, but if you slow down and you hire a coach, you could be in positive future. But if nothing changes, do you guys see what he was doing? This is neuro linguistic programming. And it is extremely powerful in recruiting. And so I'll walk you through kind of where this would look like when you're sitting down meeting with somebody, especially if they got their arms crossed and they're all tied down. Like, oh, I don't need this. I'm good. Positive present. So what are your goals? Positive present. Are you on track to hit them? What have you closed year to date? We can start moving in this direction. You guys see how that goes? What are your goals? I'm going to close 100 transactions. Cool. Where are you at? I was going to go 30, but yeah, we could go 12. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. But you see how we're, we're moving like this? Everything's good. Everything's awesome. All right, let's put the mirror up. Do you have any other business income streams? How much does it cost you to live? I mean, we can still be in po positive present, but most likely we're starting to move like this. So what's keeping you from hitting your goal? We're here. What's keeping you from hitting your goal? How many hours a week are you working on your business? How much time are you spending away from family? How do you attract or how will you attract talent to your world? I don't know, negative present. I'm having them here. Does your schedule match your goals? So for the sake of time, you guys see how we move someone here. Now here's the hardest part. We will naturally when we see somebody here, which I'm about to show you, we go here immediately because this sucks. And it's uncomfortable for you too until you train yourself to hang out here because here is what happens if nothing changes. How do you feel when you come home and it's dark and everyone's in bed? You guys see where I'm going with this? That's uncomfortable to ask. It's uncomfortable to see. And you see them start moving in the chair. And the most important part of negative future is that you don't go here. You stay here. You stay here. Because the longer you stay here, the more that they're open to hearing the solutions, which is positive future. And positive future is what you can provide, your value proposition. ET masterfully did that over and over and over and over again for a half hour. He, showed, he explained the problem that you had, had you sit in it for a split second, and then offered a solution. Community, coaching, you have so much potential, but are you living the potential? Are you your best self? Well, how are you going to become your best self? You don't have, do you have the answer? Can you do it on your own? If you could do it on your own, you would have done it. Join coaching. Join a community. Partner up. Get friends that are your peers that are here. You guys see how he's doing this? And so when you practice a presentation or, or a, a needs analysis, which would be the sit down conversation. Truly, we're doing nothing but asking where are you in your world and how can we, if they don't wanna move, if they fear change, if they do not want to make, even if it's gold on the other side of the, of the bridge, the only way to get them here is to sit here and have them self-discover that status quo isn't going to get there. And that's the purpose of sitting down. And when you have the solution, consider it being the second appointment. Meaning, so it sounds like we know what we need to do. Let's do this. Let me take some time and put together a plan and would you be available tomorrow at four to review that plan? So now they go home, they don't have the solution, they sat here for a while, and the next opportunity you have is an offer and the plan.
and away you go.